practice like here. But basically, it consists of a technique. So maybe you're throwing an offside. In this case, I'm throwing a snap. So what I'm doing is I'm in my guard. I'm throwing three snaps, going back to guard. Video camera person is filming me straight on, and then they're going to move to my side. And then you see what I look like from the side. And now not every single snap from every direction is going to be identical, but hopefully you're going to be able to paint a picture, a uh, 360 degree picture of what you look like when you're throwing that technique. So like I said earlier, you know, in some of the limitations of the fights we see, maybe some guy's throwing an absolutely beautiful snap and you're filming from here, and man, that should have just landed and crunched, but nobody can see that my foot is six feet or six inches off the ground. So hopefully with a 360 degree view of your technique, you're gonna be able to pick up those nuances uh, with both legs, both hips, your front and your back. So we'll take a look at what this looks like. There was a pretty, pretty big mistake I made with my first snap from the right hand side that I felt while I was doing it and now with video I get to see what the mistake was made. So if you watch my left foot, see how it kind of shuffles forward there? That's because when I threw that first shot, my weight came over the top of my knees and I moved forward and my body had to autocorrect and I had to move my positioning. And the goal of the drill was to stay in one spot and throw three blows. So I made a mistake of overextending with my arm, bringing my weight forward, and thus my feet had to compensate. So something I need to work on on the pel now is making sure my feet are staying solid and if I'm in a position where I'm going to be in my guard and throwing a flat snap, I want to be able to do that without overextending my body. So I'll just back it up here and we can watch that in full time. We're developing your core strength so that if you do get off balance, you don't have to use your feet to mm -hmm. readjust. Now, you tend to load snap. Do you do that in a fight? Um, yeah, I think my, my, my technique <coughs> with that snap is I bring it back over my shoulders, I bring the power over my shoulders, and then from here, I can, I can pick targeting whether I want to go low or high. So I tend to come back with it. And, you know, maybe the next drill would have been me if I was <coughs> closer to my opponent and I was throwing this snap. So you, you get to play and you could also, you could throw an opponent into the mix. Just, you know, let your imagination take over when you're doing these drills. If you want to see, you know, why does my arm hurt in here all the time when I throw this shot, so take, some, take some video and um, pass it around with people that are technically gifted and, and maybe you can start to put together a picture. So this one doesn't necessarily work as well as I had hoped. Um, I think the, um, the fault in this one was that um, Mary started too close when she started filming this. But the, the general goal of this one is much like how I want to view my guard when I'm standing and approaching uh, somebody, I want to see what my guard is like when I'm on my knees and they're coming at me. So, typically my guard tends to adjust depending on the range of the opponent to me. So, if somebody is in, in C range and I'm on my knees, my guard is typically here. If somebody's right over top of my knees, you know, typically their sword is either here or here, and so I'm addressing that threat, and I tend to come back a little bit. Um, so watching my body adjust to their range gives me an idea of what kind of openings I'm leaving as somebody's cutting that range on me. So this didn't really translate really well to video, but I think just about everybody can see the gigantic hole I have right here available for a snap. I think maybe for this way you have one person filming from the side while another person steps forward. Right. And then you can see the actual full movement. And, and that's, that's one thing to keep in mind with these drills is they're taken from the perspective of an opponent, but that angle can change. You know, you could pretend that they're coming straight on, but do it from a three-quarter view. 
You can have people filming from the side while an opponent does it to you. Um, you know, the, the more information you can pick up, the better. So the next drill I have. So the next blow I have uh, is taken from a side view, because I didn't want to be busy, uh, was right now my body positioning relative to the steel pole here is just about C, D range. So what I'm trying to accomplish in this drill is I'm trying to get into B range while throwing an effective blow. If you remember back to the video with Magnus and Sir Sigurd, he does a really good job of going from D range to A range, but he doesn't really throw an effective blow as he's um, transitioning through those ranges. So with this drill, I'm trying to uh, transition from ranges while throwing an effective killing blow, bringing me back into guard and the range I want to be. Do you normally throw a snap with your with your offside leg <coughs> forward? Uh, yes. So that was one thing so that, that I didn't like about this when I did it, when I wanted to make a correction, was I felt there was a long time between me starting to cock the blow, the blow coming over, and then now as I'm pushing the blow forward with this hip, now my weight all of a sudden has to transfer back over to this hip to bring my leg forward. So it's almost two actions, and I'm pretty sure that if the blow would have landed, it would not have been a successful killing blow. So I took a look at it, went back to it, and now I uh, made a correction. I'm still throwing with that, with that foot, um, but for whatever reason, I remember feeling a little bit more solid when I threw it. Also, uh, the other thing I noticed when I threw that first one was I was leaning back a little bit over my guard. I wasn't in a, uh, in a proper guard, but I like to call where I've got my shoulders over my hips and my hips over my knees. I'm very sound in my core. In the last one, uh, which I'll load up here. Yeah, so my shoulders are back. And I'm, I'm trying to close range here. So if anything, I should be over and moving forward. But I'm starting this at a disadvantage because now I've got an extra three to four inches to transition through. So that was a correction I immediately wanted to make. And as we look at this, I'll go back to the start. I've been training with Olford on that one, uh, uh, being forward so that I don't give a tell when I'm starting to move forward. I'm already in that forward position. Do you have some old film of you doing that rope-a-dope? Because uh, yeah, <laughs> the reason I'm asking is because if you could have, if you, could, you could analyze well, why did you do that? Why were, were you, were you, were you, did you feel like you were stepping with the wrong foot and you needed, yeah. to, and you needed to switch? Because I mean, because if if I'm trying to close range, I mean, I mean, we, you know, we all know that sword leg forward versus sword leg back. I mean, as far as range is concerned, I mean, you know, to get there faster. It was one of the lessons I learned when I was when I was doing this blow is I am way less effective and it is really messing with my technique when I'm this foot forward. So when I'm throwing my snaps, I need to be make sure that I'm equally effective as throwing snaps with shield foot forward as I am with this foot forward. Because uh, and we'll go into this into the next drill is you know what happens if you're in a position where you want to get out of range and you have to throw a blow like this. If 